stuff. Mike, you've covered uh, our next guest extensively for years now. Uh, and we were both really shocked when we heard last week that Conrad Murray had written a book. It's called This Is It, The Secret Lives of Conrad Murray and Michael Jackson. And we talked about it last week that some of the things that at that point that we had heard that he was alleging in this book were outrageous mm -hmm. and sort of outlandish. But now we're hearing some more things from this book and they're not just outrageous and outlandish, they're criminal. And honestly, I'm shocked at, that Conrad Murray would write some of these things in the book, but we're gonna find out uh, now why he did this uh, and find out more about those stories because Dr. Conrad Murray is joining us right now. Uh, Conrad, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, but your choice of words are unusual. What is criminal about the book? This is Mike, uh, Dr. Murray. I can answer that. So the way uh, that you describe some of Michael's relationships with children in your book, um, specifically Emma Watson, the actress, and Michael's goddaughter, that he wanted to be with her and move to London when she was 11 years old, and he wanted to marry his 12-year-old goddaughter. To us, that seems as if you are, you're, you're you are saying, just or, saying you're, that Michael had a thing for children or wanted to be married to a minor. Um, and obviously, Michael Jackson was acquitted of, of molestation charges. Um, so that's so the part that sounds that criminal. That, to us, sounds criminal, that he wanted to marry a, a minor. So, yeah, and the story you're referring to is that, you know, there was a, a crush on a five-year-old girl, a crush, uh, infatuation, if you want to call it. And then over the years, it grew to the fact that Michael had discussed with the father, Mark Lester, a good friend of his, that he would want to betroth the girl one day. And Mark said to Michael, by his words and his recall, Michael, whenever you're ready, just tell me what you want to do and I'll make it happen. Well, I had no idea that um, when I asked how old the child was, she was then about 11 or 12 years old. Michael wasn't even sure how old the kids were. Now, but he, knows, that but he knew that they were, uh, that doesn't. They Make knew. They sense. knew. He knew Michael they knew were... they were minors, and right. that, it, that that's why we said criminal. That that's illegal to marry or have any relations with a 12-year-old if you were in your 40s or 50s. I I would say, Mike, it may not. It may border on abnormality, but it is not really criminal unless you have performed an act. Well, let me ask Do you, Dr. Think... Murray. You you were you were friends with Michael Jackson and very close with him, um, close to his death. By, by normality, can I ask you a question that whether you think, because Michael was accused of a lot of things in his lifetime, do you believe that ever in the past, Michael Jackson, or did he ever talk to you about those situations? Did he ever take it to the level of beyond just having that kind of crush or infatuation? Do you believe Michael took Which, any by the steps way, is further still weird to say that would be on a five year old? True, but, but that's my question. Did he ever take it? to any extreme, do you believe he ever did anything like that? It is not sexual. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Murray. The, you say in the book that Michael told you that he wanted you to tell these stories if anything ever happened to him. A lot of people claim, and I have worked with many of them, that Michael Jackson said things to them because once they could profit off of whatever the stories were, they told them. Um, I, I wanna hear it from you. What exactly was that conversation like? What did Michael say to you? And what did, do you think yeah, he wanted you to tell? How did that conversation go about telling his story if something happened to him? I never decided to write a book about Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson told me a number of confessions and asked me that should anything happen to him, should he die, should he be injured or find himself in a position where he could not defend himself or anyone try to hurt his children, etc. Then he wanted me to tell his story to the world. And he, wanted you, to tell, and he wanted you to tell the world that he had a crush on a five-year-old. I'm, I'm, I'm asking only because it's in your book, and I'm taking you at your word that this is what Michael wanted you to say. If I'm going to tell a factual story that is honest, I don't need to, to protect Michael, give him some burnish impression that he's not. Michael is not a perfect man, neither am I. I like you, you are not. We have good and bad sides in our, in, our, in our lives. And Michael has some darkness, but he has a lot of light. I, I've wanted to ask you this for a very long time. Um, many people who knew Michael Jackson, who were very close to him, believe that Michael's relationships with his doctors, um, specifically Arnie Klein, you, people that he knew in his life, he had a relationship. You, you just said you were close with Michael. And people, a lot of people, believe Michael's addictions to pain medication, propofol, and all of these other things 
stem from the fact, one, that he was an addict, but, but second, very close second, to the fact that he was friends with his doctors and that the relationship was inappropriate to be that close with your doctors. To that, you say? I, I think, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with a doctor being a friend of a patient. Because patients have a lot of confidence in their doctors. They love their doctors. Patients love, doctors love their patients. But the thing about it, Michael compartmentalized his physician in this particular case. He never shared with me that he was abusing narcotics. He never shared to me that Dr. Arnold Klein was pumping him up on a daily basis with 900, sometimes close to 1,000 milligrams of Demerol. He made a song called Morphine, but I will tell you this. Michael never, complained, Michael never complained about pain that required that kind of treatment. It was just a habit he was being fed. Look, uh, Dr. Arnie Klein has passed away, uh, and so he can't defend himself, but it seems uh, almost hypocritical to hear you sort of throwing stones at Arnie Klein for giving Michael too much Demerol, which obviously he, he did do, we know that, right. when you were the one who was giving him propofol, which eventually killed him. No, 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 that's not the case. Michael Jackson did not die from propofol. I was accused of having Michael Jackson on a propofol infusion starting at 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock. But the, the professional, Dr. Schaefer, also showed that, that Michael Jackson, because of injections of lorazepam, would have been in a coma and not responsive to painful stimulus since 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 a.m., and would not have gotten out of that state until about 10, 30, 11 in the day. So if somebody is in a coma, does it make sense to start them on a propofol drip or an infusion before that? That did not happen. You tell me why the coroner's office up till now has not provided a brain propofol level when they said he died from apnea, and you require propofol to be in the brain in order to make the case. They have never provided it because it's not there. So you believe that you, your administering of propofol to Michael Jackson had nothing to do with his death? Nothing that I gave Michael Jackson should have harmed him. Yes, that's correct. Well, I mean, the jury disagreed, but uh, I, I, I hear what you're saying. That's, that is... people go to jail every day. It's not new. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, whoever is there with you, I hear, uh, hear what they're saying. Yes, innocent people do go to jail. I, I'm just... I, it's interesting to hear you say you're still... You still insist that you were innocent. I am. Okay. Listen, Dr. Murray, thank you for joining us. Uh, the book is called This Is It, The Secret Lives of it's Conrad out, Murray. It's out today and Michael Jackson. Uh, I, it's remarkable that, uh, that Michael said to you he wanted you to, to tell this full story. And, I'm, and if he did, I'm glad you're telling it. And you know why? Because Michael never got a chance to tell the world what was done to him. The book points out all the people who have done him wrong. I, you go there and check it, and you'll find out. I, Read that oh, book. Dr. Murray, I have to say this, and, and thank you for coming on, but I think you're right. Michael never got the chance to tell anyone, and I think a lot of people out there listening to this believe that's because you were his doctor. And I'm, it's, it, I just have to say that a lot of people believe Michael never got the chance to say anything because he's not with us anymore because of the propofol trip that he was on. It ended up killing him. And I, I want to say that out of respect, but just to tell you he that just, because that is the fact of what happened to Michael's existence. And, That's what the jury said, and, and, Dr. And, Murray. And, we... But thank you for coming on. Yeah. And the book's out read, today. Uh, and... Read the book, and I'll come back. I All promise right. you that. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Thanks for, for joining us. Okay.